So now we reach the section where we talk about the mole. Moles are awesome. Okay, so there's the mole that's the little furry animal with poor eyesight. That's not the mole we're talking about. Then there's mole, which is a sauce, and that's not what we're talking about, like guacamole. We'll dip a sauce. I'm, I'm, it is avogadro's <laughs> Yeah. There, there, there's a good joke about avogadro's number and guacamole. And, yeah, anyway. Because, uh, yeah, guacamole is made out of avocados, which are like avogadro. Yes. But the mole is a unit that chemists choose. The mole is a very important unit, and so if you're chatting amongst yourselves, you're going to miss out on what the mole is, and you're going to be lost for the rest of the semester. And now it got quiet. Okay, good, good. So another way to think of the mole is the chemist's dozen. Okay? So what is a dozen? Twelve. Twelve what? Twelve anything, right? Dozen is a number dozen is 12, okay? The mole is a number. It's just a little more complicated than 12, okay? So the, the mole is defined as the number of things um, that are equal to the number of carbon atoms in 12.01 grams of carbon. So you may be thinking, well, what does that mean? You know, it is what it is. Next one is more important. A mole of anything is 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd units of that thing. Well, it's not 12. It's not 6. It's 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd. Is that a big number or a small number? That's a crazy big number. That's a 6 with 23 zeros after it. Crazy big number. Yeah. Um... And that number has a name. It's called Avogadro's number. Avogadro was a scientist who um, did some work that led to the determination of that number. So if we say a mole of carbon, we mean Avogadro's number of carbon atoms. Just like if we say a dozen eggs, we mean 12 eggs. A dozen cars is 12 cars. A dozen people is 12 people. A mole of carbon is 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd carbon atoms. Now, these units were chosen, the size of them, so that they would be convenient. What did we learn was the mass of one carbon atom? It's on the periodic table behind you. 12.01 what? Atomic mass units. So one atom weighs 12.01 atomic mass units. A mole, a chemist dozen of those, weighs 12.01 grams. Okay? So one of them is 12 atomic mass units. The chemist dozen of them is 12 grams. Same number for the mass, different unit. A gram is much larger than an atomic mass unit. Okay? So now all those numbers on the periodic table have a new use, okay? They are the mass in grams of one mole of that element. One mole, 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd. So I just have to tell you a little story here. Um, let's see, what color do I have? So October 23rd is 1023. That's coming up. October 23rd is Mole Day. <laughs> yeah, I accidentally pulled something down. Mole Day. So, you know, the, the mathematicians have Pi Day on March 14th, and we have Mole Day. Now, we don't eat moles, but it's Mole Day. 1023 from 10 to the 23rd. Very good. So, my husband is a chemist, I'm a chemist. Our fourth child was born on Mole Day. It was awesome. So, he was born on October 23rd. Hey, you know, nerds have fun too, right? <laughs> and what, what was even. What are the chances? Exactly, right? Well, 
because the chances of two, two chemists getting married and having a baby are very high because we have six of them. Um, he was born on Mole Day, and what was even cooler is he weighed 10 pounds, and he was 23 and a half inches long. Oh. Yeah, the girls are saying, oh. No, he was easy. He was number four. Uh, I tried to have him at 6.02 a.m. or p.m. That didn't quite work out. So it was like 8.30 p.m. But still, it was mole day, and it was, it was fabulous. So, yeah. Michael's birthday is coming up. We toyed with giving him the middle name Avogadro, but we decided wisely against that. We didn't get too carried away. Okay, but this, this business down here, this is a couple of equalities strung together, isn't it? One mole of carbon equals Avogadro's number of carbon atoms. Avogadro's number of carbon atoms equals 12.01 grams of carbon, and then we can also say that one mole of carbon equals 12.01 grams. So we can make a whole bunch of conversion factors out of that. So let's do some of them. Okay, so we can have one mole of carbon per 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd carbon <coughs> atoms. And yes, these things get really long. Or we could tip that upside down and say 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd carbon atoms per one mole of carbon. I don't feel like writing it out. <laughs> we could say that 12.01 grams of carbon per Avogadro's number of carbon atoms. I can take any two of those, put one on top and one on bottom, and use it to convert things. I can also say that there's one mole of carbon atoms, sorry, one mole of carbon in 12.01 grams of carbon. This is called the molar mass. The other way to write it is 12.01 grams of carbon per one mole of carbon. The molar mass is the mass of a mole. Which is all the atoms weighed together at that number. It's, it's Avogadro's number of carbon atoms, 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd carbon atoms is one mole. One mole of carbon weighs 12.01 grams. One mole of indium weighs 114.8 grams. One mole of sodium weighs 22.99 grams. It's the number below the symbol on the periodic table. So guess what? We're going to do dimensional analysis with these things. Not on this slide, though. So take a, take a breath. So a sample of an element with a mass equal to these words. Yeah. Okay, a sample of an element with a mass equal to that element's average atomic mass expressed in grams contains one mole of atoms. The way they say these things just doesn't make sense. Um, so if you take the atomic mass, which is on the periodic table, and you put the unit gram on it, that's the mass of one mole. That's what that says and it's Avogadro's number of things. Now, th this is just one of these weird things in science that I just would like someone to explain to me. Okay, so the word mole is a very short word, isn't it? It's only four letters. It has an abbreviation, a three-letter abbreviation, <laughs> M-O-L. And then we have this word molecule. Molecule is much longer. There's no abbreviation for molecule. But mole has an abbreviation. Okay, but so if you see MOL, it's just missing the silent E, okay? MOL is exactly the same as MOLE. Then here's a table that's just showing us here um, aluminum. If we have a mole of aluminum, we've got Avogadro's number of aluminum atoms, and the mass is 26.98 grams. That's the number under the symbol on the periodic table. That's a good question. Here in a mole, we have the same number of atoms, and yet the masses are different. It's because each atom is a different size. 
uh, an aluminum atom is not the same size as a gold atom. A gold atom weighs a lot more than an aluminum atom. So if I have a dozen, um, if I have a dozen ping pong balls or a dozen softballs, are they going to weigh the same? No, because ping pong balls weigh a lot less than softballs, right? So even though I have the same number of them, their mass is different. Well, the, the idea of the mole fits best with the idea of a dozen. We do have other counting units in, in real life, like chemistry isn't real. Um, do you know what a ream is? A ream of paper is 500 sheets of paper. Ream is a unit that means 500. Do you know what a gross is? It's not something that's disgusting. A gross is a dozen dozen. A gross is 144 of something. Pardon me? Oh, paycheck. Okay, so it's a unit like that that's... It's a counting unit. It's a counting unit. And, and this, is, this is something worth, you know, spending a little time on and helping you get your mind around this. Because if you don't understand, really understand this idea of mole, you're going to have trouble. Okay, so a mole is just a certain number of things. So if you can think of it as a dozen, but instead of 12, it's that weird number. Okay, so treat it just like you would dozen. A dozen donuts and a dozen cars do not have the same mass, right? They don't have the same volume either, but we don't care so much about volume. In the lab, when we want to take a certain amount of chemical, we can't take numbers of atoms because they're too small. It's not like eggs and you're going to make pancakes and you need four eggs and you go to the, and you count out four eggs. Because these atoms are so crazy tiny that we end up dealing with zillions and zillions of them when we have an amount that's big enough to see. Because in a, in a grain of sand, little tiny grain of sand, there are an incredible number of molecules in there. If each of those molecules was as big as the grain of sand, it would be bigger than Mount Everest. So the, really, the particles are so incredibly tiny. And this number, 6 times 10 to the 23rd, we just can't even grasp how large that is. My kids have a book, How Much is a Million? And it talks about, well, if you had a million this. And then it goes and says, if you had a billion. And, and even a billion is so large, it's really hard to understand. And then you talk about the national debt and the trillions. And you know, we, we just can't even fathom how big that is. This is way bigger. I think if you had... Um, I get these analogies just kind of float around in my head, and I, I've, I may be miss, missing this one up, messing it up. Um, I think if you had a mole of marbles, it would cover the earth to a depth of one mile. Avogadro's number of marbles. Just not the shooter marbles, just the regular marbles. Can you imagine how many marbles that must be? A mole? Like a bag of marbles. Right. It would weigh how much? Uh, I, have to I I'd need to know the marble. the mass of a marble. So well, like. You have that, oh, you're talking atoms. I'm thinking marbles again, not no. atoms. No. I I'm talking, I'm talking about. Understanding how big this number is. So if you had Avogadro's number of marbles. It would cover the surface of the earth all the way around to a depth of a mile. That's a crazy huge number. Have you ever driven outside of California? Anybody? A couple people. I've driven to Minnesota and back a few times. You get in the car and you drive and you drive. You drive for days and you make it halfway across the country. You're like, it's a big country. 
And that's only one little part of the whole globe. The whole globe, the oceans, everything, covered to a depth of a mile with marbles. That's a, it's just crazy big number, okay? So just have in your head, Avogadro's number, crazy big number. We can't understand how big that number is. And we also can't understand how tiny an atom is. <laughs> Avogadro's number of atoms makes up an amount of sample that's reasonable for us to deal with in the lab. Typically, a gram is about the size of a green pea. Okay? So 12 grams of carbon would be like 12 peas. It fits in the, in the palm of your hand. And yet it's large enough that you can see it and handle it. And so for most of these elements, one mole of them is enough that you can hold it in your hand and you can see it. So it's a reasonable quantity. And so these, these numbers and these units and stuff weren't chosen randomly. They were chosen to be relatively convenient. So we have the same number of each of these different elements, same number of atoms, but because an aluminum atom weighs 26.98 atomic mass units and a gold atom weighs 196 atomic mass units, then when we have the same number of them, that huge number of gold atoms is going to weigh more than the number of alumina, same number of aluminum atoms. Because each of them is bigger. Just like a dozen cars is going to weigh more than a dozen donuts. Because the cars are a lot bigger than a donut, right? So, so that weight really isn't the weight of a thing the, the element. It's the weight of that many. It depends on what unit you put on it. So the atomic masses, those red numbers under the element symbols. Those, if you use atomic mass unit, which is a unit that just doesn't really make a lot of sense to us, because it's just crazy tiny. It's, it's, it's like an extra made up unit. They're all made up, but that one's like extra made up. You know, like, yeah, whatever, atomic mass unit. In atomic mass units, that's the mass of one atom. But in grams, it's the mass of a mole of atoms. Crazy huge number of atoms. Does that make more sense? Yeah. And these are... Because I was always... Because I, I kept being confused. And I was... Because I think last lecture we started talking about something and it was saying grams. And I was like, there's no way that one... There's no way that one atom of carbon could weigh 12 grams. Any gram at all. Right. right. Yeah. It's like 10 to the negative 28th kilograms or something crazy like that. Yeah. In lab on Friday, we got a little bit of ahead of ourselves and we had to kind of mess around with this into a little bit. But yeah, that's an important idea that... <clears throat> That mass in grams is that crazy huge number of atoms. It's a mole of atoms. A mole of atoms. So it, but if it's just one atom, then the unit is atomic mass units and not grams. And you know, once we get into, once we get a little farther, we're really not going to use atomic mass units much anymore at all. But we had to talk about them because, well, you have to start somewhere. So any other questions about this idea? Um, there, I need to delete the, the answers here because I want to do it. Conversion is a conversion unit between AMUs and moles. Um, you just changed the sign. You just changed the wording, the AMU and the mole. An atomic an atomic mass unit has a relationship to grams that I don't remember off the top of my head. I think it's like 1.8 times 10 to the minus 28 kilograms. So we never use atomic mass units and moles at the same time. We don't even torture you with it, no. 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 There, there's, you know, we only torture you with things that we feel like we need to torture you with. We feel there's a purpose but behind that would torture. Be the same thing, right? One mole equals whatever that number is, atomic mass units. 
Well, if it's not in no, grams, that, that, that number is a mole in grams. If it's atomic mass units, then it's only one atom. We could figure so out a... Fi so there's no, like, number from moles to atomic mass units? Um, we could figure it out, but there's so it's, it's not, not listed weight. anywhere. But, okay, so is an atomic mass unit still... Yeah, it's weight, obviously. Atomic, yeah. atomic mass unit, it, it's a unit that measures the mass of an atom. Atomic mass... Unit. Wasn't that a clever name they came up with? Atomic mass unit. It's a unit that measures the mass of an atom. Let's read it backwards. Unit, mass, atom. Atomic mass unit. So let, let's forget about atomic mass units for a while. Calculate the number of iron atoms in a 4.48 mole sample of iron. So what does mole mean? This is a crazy number. So one mole is 6.022 times 10 times 10 to the 23rd atoms. So if we have 4.48 moles, then how many atoms do we have? Well, this is dimensional analysis. We want to put atoms on top, and we want to put moles on the bottom. Because we're starting with moles, we want to divide by moles. The relationship between mole, which is a counting unit, and number of atoms, one mole is the number of atoms. Okay, and Avogadro's number is one of the main reasons that you have to understand how to use scientific notation on your calculator, because there's no other way to get it into your calculator. So when we do this, get your calculator out, 4.48 times 6.022, and then times 10 to the is your EE button or your EXP button, they're the same. There are some calculation, calculators that actually have a little times 10 to the button. So times 10 to the 23, press the equal sign. Okay, so my calculator is showing me this. That's calculator language. I have to translate that into human math language. Some calculators have a little times 10 in there. Others don't. Mine doesn't. So that's not a good answer because when I write that down, we think 2.6 whatever time raised to the 24th power, and that's not what we mean at all. This means, and I'm going to round this to three significant figures. Um, I'm going to keep this one. The next one's five or greater, I need to round up, that rounds the nine up to a ten, which rounds the six up to a seven. 2.70 times ten to the twenty-fourth atoms. That's how you need to express your answer. Do you need to put the iron everything? On this one, you don't. It doesn't hurt, iron, atoms of iron. We'll, we'll get to some things where it becomes very important, but it's not important yet. Is it better to get in the habit of doing it? It's better to get in the habit of doing it, yeah. How many gold atoms are in 4.48 moles of gold? Same. The same. Good. Because a mole is a counting unit. If I have... Two and a half dozen donuts, 30 donuts, or two and a half dozen cars, that's 30 cars. It's the same number of things. So atoms were, are, this is a, a counting unit for atoms. Any questions? <laughs> Your brain's like, yeah. Because I'm stuck on what I know is a dozen eggs and a dozen this because that's what I know and I'm very right. comfortable with. 
Right. Because I'm not comfortable with the concept. <laughs> so how would you figure out... <laughs> how would I figure out what? The weight. The weight. We'll get to that. We, we don't want their heads to explode, right? <laughs> Too late. <laughs> Too late. Well, that's what that liquid is leaking out your ears. Okay, so let's think about this. What if we had 4.48 dozen donuts? How many donuts would that be? I know, I'm making you hungry. I talked about pancakes in 3A. So we would need to do a little calculation here. Call those DN donuts. There's 12 donuts in one dozen, right? So 4.48 times 12, 53.76. That's a lot of donuts. It's dozens. A dozen is 12. And that's what the mole is. Yes. That dozen. Okay. 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 Yeah. <laughs> so the, the reason I'm, I'm, I'm doing that little dozen one there is to show you the process here is the same. Dozen is a counting unit. And here we put the counting unit down here so that those are going to cancel out. And we put the number that it means up here, and this is the item that we're counting, donuts, D-N, because I didn't feel like writing it out. Here, we're doing exactly the same thing. Mole is the chemist dozen, okay? Chemists are weird, we do weird things, and so we have weird units. And here, so a mole, that's where you would put dozen. And up here, we're counting atoms instead of donuts. And instead of 12, we put 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd. So one thing you can do if you're having trouble setting these questions up is pretend that the mole is a dozen and, and set it up like this. Set it up with dozen. And then say, okay, wherever it says dozen, I'm going to put in the word mole. And wherever there's 12, I'm going to put in Avogadro's number because that's what it means. It's the same idea. And we've all learned how to... Think about dozens. We're, we're, we're fine with dozens. A dozen bagels. Okay? And so we just need to transfer that and learn this new number and this new word, and it's the same pattern of thinking. Okay? It's exactly the same pattern of thinking. Let's go on to the next one. Yeah. I really need to edit my slides. <laughs> Determine the number of copper atoms in a 63.55 gram sample of copper. So you're like, hmm, okay. We were doing atoms in moles, but this is atoms in grams. What do we do? Well, on the periodic table, it tells us the mass of one mole. So copper says what under it? 63.55 grams. So one mole of copper is equal to 63.55 grams of copper. So this is saying, how many copper atoms do I have in 63.55 grams? Avogadro's number. This is kind of a trick question. There's no real calculating that you have to do. Because one mole equals 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd atoms. Yeah. Came up with one and one would be the same. yeah. Yeah, you can set up a, a conversion. You can convert from grams to moles to atoms. Um, but that's not what they're getting at right here. So if you have a mass that's equal to the molar mass, that's Avogadro's number of atoms. Yeah. 
that was the answer, Avogadro's number. So here's another concept check. Which of the following is closest to the average mass of one atom of copper? This doesn't require a calculation either. There's only one it can be. It's E, right? Because what did we say? We said that atoms are incredibly small. Can an atom weigh over 50 grams? No. Absolutely impossible. All of the first four choices are completely unreasonable. Now, a mole of copper weighs 63.55 grams, but that's not one copper atom. So one copper atom is 1.055 times 10 to the minus 22 grams, which is a crazy small number. It's a decimal point and 21 zeros, 1055 grams. So we wouldn't, we wouldn't be figuring in that. Mm -mm. I would just know that one atom, you're going to pick the small It's got to be a crazy small number. No matter what it is, because we wouldn't be questioning if that was actually the right answer. Right. As far as that's not what and, and a lot of these concept check questions, they're very good for us to talk about in lecture. Yeah. But I would never give you a question like this on an exam. Okay, this is more of a let's think about it question. And usually students in Chem 10 don't like to think about things, and they don't like to think about new things on an exam. They really, really don't. Like, no, let's just stick to what we've been doing, right? And so on exams, we're going to stick to what we've been doing. We're going to go straight forward, small chunks of information. But it's good to talk about these and, and get some of those bigger ideas. So if you rephrase that question and you weren't asking for the average mass of one atom, and how would you rephrase that to have the answer be A? If we said, what's the mass of one mole, then it would be A. Then it would be A. And again, that wouldn't require a calculation either. It would require looking at the periodic table. And under copper, it says 63.55. That's the mass of one mole in grams. The mass of one atom in atomic mass units is 63.55. Atomic mass units. One copper atom equals 63.55 atomic mass units, but not grams. One mole, one chemist dozen of <laughs> copper is 63.55 grams. It's really messy. Okay, any questions? One atom is 63.55 atomic mass units. Atomic mass unit is a unit so small that it's, you know, we don't have balances that weigh in that because atoms are so small. Atoms are so small that in order to make a unit that had a reasonable number, we had to make up this really crazy small unit. It, but in grams, it's a mole. So here's another thinking question. A sample of 26.98 grams of aluminum has the same number of atoms as how many grams of gold? As a student told me how to remember um, the symbol for gold. Do you guys remember, um, oh, what was that show? Facts of Life. Did you guys ever watch Facts of Life reruns or anything? This is about this boarding school, and there was this little black girl named Tootie, and she was studying chemistry. And, oh, I can remember that one, because if someone steals your gold, you say, Hey, you, come back with my gold. <laughs> hey, you, gold, okay? Yeah, that'll be a weird picture in your head. Okay, so that was chemistry related. Um, so we got some all these numbers here. Let's look at the periodic table. What's the molar mass of aluminum? 26.98. So one mole of aluminum equals 26.98 grams of aluminum. So what they're asking us about is one mole, right? 
So the same number of atoms would be one mole. One mole of gold weighs how much? We'll find out on the periodic table. It's kind of at the bottom. 196, 197. Because one mole of gold is 197.0 grams of gold. So that's another one of those kind of tricky questions. Chem 10 students don't like tricky questions. Here's another thinking question. Sorry, there's a bunch of them. Which of the following 100 gram samples contains the greatest number of atoms? So let's step back and think about real life objects. Okay? Let's say we had 100 pounds of tennis balls and marbles and basketballs. So let's just kind of alter this question. 100 pounds, and let's say we have tennis balls and marbles and basketballs. Same mass of each. Which is going to have more pieces? I can't hear anybody. Tennis balls, marbles, basketballs. Which is going to have more? A hundred, a hundred pounds of them. The same mass. Does a tennis ball and a basketball weigh the same amount? I thought that's what you said. No, I'm saying you have a bunch of tennis balls that together weigh 100 pounds. Oh, oh. And a bunch of marbles that together weigh 100 pounds. And a bunch of basketballs that together weigh 100 pounds. Which is going to have more pieces in it? The marbles, right? Why? Because the marbles are smaller, the marbles weigh less. So if you have the same amount of stuff, it's a little bit like the which weighs more, a pound of feathers or a pound of bricks. You thought I was really trying to trick you. Okay, a pound of feathers and a pound of bricks weigh the same amount. But which one has more? How many bricks in a pound of bricks? Maybe not even one, right? How many feathers in a pound of feathers? A lot of feathers, right? Because each feather weighs almost nothing. A tennis ball isn't lighter than a marble. I don't think so. Okay, well, let's make it ping pong balls then. <laughs> no, I think a tennis ball weighs more. Or make it um, airsoft pellets. But it's not really weight, though, as much as it's taking up. It's but we're, we're not caring about how much space it takes up. We're not talking about volumes here at all. So to figure this out, <laughs> yeah, okay, let's get back to this question. I want to get out of here. Actually, you know, you just have to stay till the end of class regardless of how far we get. But thank you for bringing us back. So how do we figure it out with the chemicals? A 100-gram sample of each. Well, we figure out which, which one of them has atoms that weigh the least. Which one has the smallest atoms in terms of mass? Well, magnesium is 24 grams in a mole. Zinc is 65, and silver is more than that, 107, 108. So if you have 100 grams of magnesium atoms, you're going to have more atoms than if you have 100 grams of silver. 100 grams of silver is not even a mole, because one mole weighs 108 grams. 100 grams of magnesium is about four moles, because each, each mole is 24 grams. So the answer is magnesium. So we end up in a debate about which weighs more, marble or tennis and it ball. Was tennis balls. No, it wasn't. <laughs> okay, calculate the number of moles of atoms in a 25.0 gram sample of calcium.
Well, less than one. <laughs> Okay, so we, we're, we're going to really be relying on the periodic table a lot now. So the periodic table tells us that one mole of calcium is 40.08. Got my eyes to focus and I lost what I was looking at. Getting old is so fun. So one mole of calcium is 40.0 grams. So in 25 grams is going to be less than a mole, but how much less? We can figure this out. This is a conversion factor. This is a relationship between moles and mass. And so we're going to do dimensional analysis. 25, ugh, start over. 25.0 grams of calcium times, we want to know how many moles. So we're going to put moles on the top. And we're going to put grams on the bottom. One mole weighs 40.08. 25 divided by 40.08 equals, um, this should have three sig figs. Grams and grams. You see how I did that? I know you see how I did that. <laughs> so on the periodic table is a conversion factor that allows you to convert between moles and grams for any element. It's just sitting there waiting for you. You could, you, can, you could express that in scientific notation. Kind of my rule of thumb is if there's enough zeros that you have to think about counting them, you can't just see, oh, that's three zeros, then you should put it into scientific notation. Or if you have to round off and you're going to mess things up. So we get a smidge of time here. I'm going to just run this one um, by you here. Learning to solve problems. And we'll, we'll start up again with this on Friday. Problem solving, okay? I don't know what they've been teaching you guys in school, but a lot of you have not learned how to solve problems, okay? You can learn how to be a better problem solver, and that's a skill that you may get from chemistry class that will serve you well for the rest of your life. So, first of all, you have to figure out what you're trying to find out. You have to read the problem, Read the whole problem before you start doing any calculations. Read the problem and figure out what your goal is. What am I trying to find? So you need to know where you're going so that you can go in the right direction. And then you need to figure out, well, how am I going to get there? You also need to know where you're starting. Sometimes it's obvious where you're starting and sometimes it's not. Sometimes it helps to, to start at the goal and work backwards to figure out where do I start. And then really important is a reality check. When you finish your problem, look at it and say, does my answer make sense? Is it reasonable? Sometimes you can't tell, but a lot of times you can. If I ask you to calculate how many atoms are in five grams of aluminum, and you come up with 4.7 times 10 to the minus 13 atoms, is that reasonable? Is that more or less than one atom? That's less than one atom. Can you have less than one atom? No, you can't. You can have less than a gram because that's a mass. But when you divide matter down, atoms are the smallest building blocks and you can't have part of an atom. It's like people. You say, well, how many people are in your family? 0.036. Okay, you did your math wrong, right? Because how can you have less than a person? You can't. Now, you know, you could have someone who lost a finger in a shop accident or something. Okay, so maybe you've got an isotope, a different number of neutrons. But you can't have less than a whole person. 
you can have smaller moles because mole is a huge number. Like you can have part of a dozen. You can have half a dozen donuts, right? You can have half a dozen people. That's six people. I have half a dozen children. Okay, I'll see you on Friday. Peace.